Hi, HPC. Well, look at this. A, a ramble on the Saturday. I know, I know. It's called 40 Days of Faith, and there are 40 days of Lent, if you don't count the Sundays. Uh, so I'm going to try and do Saturdays as well. Let's see how it goes, shall we? Um, in day four, uh, Trip presents us with a bit of a problem, really, I think, because what he says about the gospel goes against everything that we are socially conditioned to believe, doesn't it? From the very earliest of ages, we get merit points for trying hard. We get recognition, we get stars, we get our name written on the board for working hard. You put in the hours, you'll get the reward. That's what they say, isn't it? Whether it's in the sports field, uh, in the library when exams roll around, or in the office. Staying late, you earn the bonus earn the bonus. Going the extra mile. How does the phrase put it? Of course, the early bird catches the worm. In other words, the more you put in, the more you get out. But the cross says there is nothing you can do. Jesus says it is finished. He says become like little children, like gift receiving experts. And then he calls us to come and take the gift that is freely offered. As Tripp puts it, what needed to be done, Jesus did. The work is complete. And then he points us to Luke chapter 1, just towards the end. Uh, what, what is known as the Benedictus, if you're an Anglican. This spirit-inspired proclamation from Zechariah gives us a beautiful and powerful picture of the gospel. Now, we often distill the gospel down into a message of God forgiving our sins, justifying us, if you want to use the technical term, because of Jesus' work on the cross. And that is true, and that is precious, and that is great news. But Zachariah's song, along with actually other parts of the Bible as well, show us that the gospel is, is much more fully orbed, much more comprehensive than just that. The gospel, as it's explained here, is God visiting and dwelling, staying with his people, saving us from our enemies, fulfilling his ancient promises, delivering us so that we might serve him without fear, forgiving our sins and shining light into the darkness of our hearts and guiding us into a life of peace. The gospel is full of mercy. You know, mercy, don't you, God? Not giving us what we deserve, not giving us what our sins deserve. But even more than that, it's full of grace, with God giving us countless gifts and his own presence as the very greatest of those gifts. When we begin to grasp the, the breadth and depth of the gracious, total work of God through Jesus, as it's described here, our hearts are stirred to love the Lord. We are devoted to him. We begin to get a vision that all of God is for us. Understanding the gospel in this broader way makes Jesus not just the religious part of our life, if you like, but the focus of all our hopes. We should meditate regularly on the fullness of this salvation, on all that Jesus is for us and has done for us. Let me pray. Gracious Lord, I'm so sorry that we strive and struggle thinking that, um, that we can add something to Jesus' perfect life and to all that he's given us. Show us, I pray today, the fullness of your gospel blessing to us and enable us to rejoice in it. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, no rambling tomorrow. It's a Sunday. Uh, see you on Monday morning.